here with Brian Weddington. Brian, tell me a little bit about what you do holistically and for how long you've been doing it. Yeah, Nate, good to be with you. So I am the uh, managing principal of River Capital, which is a private equity firm that's been around since the early 80s, kind of a family business, more of a family office today, making direct investments into lower middle market, you know, sub $50 million companies, usually by controlling interest. Um, the last one of our portfolio companies is called Blue Wave Products. We're a, uh, a kind of a manufacturing importer um, of above ground pools, game tables, spas, saunas, patio equipment, about 3,000 products. Our big customers are Amazon, Home Depot, Wayfair, you know, et cetera. The big box retailers, their e-commerce arms. Um, so I'm the chairman and CEO of that company. Um, I'm also a very active board member of Bridge Brothers, which is a South Carolina-based uh, pedestrian bridge fabricators. We build large steel kind of truss bridges. They were from 40 feet to 280 feet, um, all different shapes and sizes. We've done some really cool projects. Um, also a, an active board member. And I led the acquisition on behalf of Bridge Brothers for Topper Industries. And they've been around since the early 70s. And they are similar. They're a, a, a bridge fabricator, but they focus more on aluminum structures. So things like gangways and docks um, that you'll find in the marina. Market, and then I'm also an owner of uh, Tree Leads on Demand, which is a digital marketing firm um, and, and print marketing firm that does focuses exclusively on uh, tree service, uh, you know, uh, removal and pruning, et cetera. Awesome, awesome. So there's a great variety in your portfolio. Just, just give me a short snippet of what are some goals uh, for each company long term. Yeah, you know, in the e-commerce business for Blue Wave, I mean, there's so much growth. I think with COVID. You saw a huge shift of new entrants into the e-commerce space, like with consumer behavior shifting. And then it seems today that maybe it was it was part COVID, or maybe it's driven by a little bit of a slowdown in the economy, where it feels like people are investing more dollars in those experiences at home. And so I think the e-commerce space is huge. Uh, you know, right now for us, it's just continuously focusing on delivering a really, really good consumer experience. So that's, that's a good product that works, it gets there quickly, and it's high quality. Um, you know, for Bridge Brothers and Topper, it's just continued growth. Um, you know, we've, we think with this infrastructure package that was passed, you know, it always kind of trickles downhill and, and helps this business. But the company's been around Bridge Brothers since 16, founded by Eli Angel and Topper Industries, which we acquired in, in uh, June of 2021, you know, 45, almost 50 years in the business. And so we're really looking forward to kind of creating just a national presence for those two businesses. And with Tree Leads, it's, it's been a really great year. Last year was kind of a breakout year for the company. And so this year is about just continuously to grow, build the brand out a little bit further, kind of create that authority figure in the marketplace. Um, and we're actually really excited. We're rolling out some uh, Sean McDonald, who's the president of that company, does an unbelievable job, one of the best digital marketers that I've ever met. Um, and, and we're really changing the lives of a lot of these guys with the, in the tree business. And so I'm, I'm excited about all four of them. Um, you know, I think it's going to be an interesting year. We'll see how the economy shakes. I think the consumer is still out there spending money, but they're a little unsure. And so, you know, cautiously optimistic about the future. But really, for me, just in anything, it's about the people. Um, it's about, you know, driving quality um, and, and trying to help lift people up through business. Awesome. Awesome. So I think you can really speak to this next question on both the private equity side and then the entire portfolio that you're you're working with. What what is a mistake that you've made or one that you've seen in one of the businesses that any other business owner could learn from, irregardless of the industry they're in? Yeah, I think just from like the entrepreneurial like business owner standpoint, more globally, I really think that um, it just comes down to action. And a lot of times, you have the best strategy in the world and you can overthink it, but life and people will just pass you by. And so I've been a big believer in version 1.0 is better than version zero. And it's about continuous improvement. You know, on each business, I mean, I've seen with, you know, not on, on Blue Wave, since we're so supply focused, you know, a lot of our stuff is, is FOB Asia. So we bring it in. Um, you know, COVID was a huge smack in the face. And a lot of inflationary pressures were created by um, disruptions to the supply chain. And so it's been an interesting business environment to navigate through, but I think that understanding your supply chain from end to end is extremely important. And so, you know, we brought in, you know, a thousand plus containers and last year and ocean freight went from, you know, 4,000 to 20, 20, 25,000. And that created a huge cost structure um, differential for us. And so, you know, that's key. And so I think, 
you know, other big mistakes just outside of don't overthinking persistence. You know, I've been at this a long time. I mean, I kind of became an entrepreneur when I was 17. Um, you know, I went off to college. I had other businesses. I was in the tailgate business. I was in the apparel business and actually built sizable companies for, you know, being a, being a young guy. And so it's just sticking to it. And when you have a passion for it, you know, that makes a big difference. And, and everybody has a God given gift. And I think that it's, sometimes it's hard to figure out what that is. Uh, but once you find it, double, double and triple down on it and, and just keep pushing. And, and honestly, that, that's a big thing. It's like when you touch enough things, good news, bad news, it kind of bounces off on you. And so you need to, you need to be focused. You need to kind of have your reason why. Um, and I think over the last couple of years, I've really, really dialed into that. And it's just been super impactful. And so, you know, just grind it out. You got you to gotta stick with it. Great advice. Great advice. So as you've gone through this process, have you had a great coach or mentor in your life? And if so, why would you choose them? You know, not directly. There are people out there that I follow. Um, you know, this year has been kind of a year where I've, uh, I've kind of gotten closer with a few few gentlemen in business that I really respect. And, and that's been helpful to have somebody to talk. But quite frankly, I mean, a lot of this I've just kind of picked up on my own. Um, I mean, I, I grew up with with access to great people and but, you know, people that come to mind, Tillman Fertitta, um, I went to school with his one of his sons, uh, Patrick, uh, at Ole Miss, and he's, he's a great friend. And I've always respected Tillman. I think he's a world class business leader. He's the chairman and CEO of Landry, he owns the Houston Rockets, Golden Nugget Casino, 600 restaurants. You know, he's a buy and build guy and, uh, and an absolute operator. He's in the details um, and just a normal guy. And I've always respected him. He, he had a show on CNBC, Billion Dollar Buyer. It's just people like that. You know, I've coupled, I've coupled it all together and, and you know, just big business guys. And, um, and so no one in particular. Okay, great. So what does the future look like for you and Blue Wave and some of the other companies? And what are some challenges you see as you move forward? Yeah, I think different, you know, different challenges uh, at each company. Um, you know, I, I think... I think one of the biggest challenges when you're dealing with multiple businesses or just one business is just that attention to detail um, and, and, and realizing that, you know, in a lot of cases you're dealing with people and it's, it can be a manual process. And so I think one of the challenges for me personally is just staying on top of all the people that I interact with, making sure that they have clear direction, you know, trust, but verify. Um, that's, that's kind of a, a, a big thing just because you say something's going to get done, doesn't mean it's going to get done. You still got to circle back, you know, but you need, you need good people. And so I think one of the biggest opportunities and challenges right now that we're facing and many other business owners are facing is attracting good talent. It seems that where did all these people go? And I'm a relatively younger guy, you know, you are, you are too. I mean, all things considered. And it's like, where did this workforce go? Um, and it seems like our generation wants to, Everybody wants to be a business owner. They don't want to work. And it's like where it'll be interesting to see how things shake out. I think that we all kind of end up more like our parents. And that would probably be for the betterment of the American economy and entrepreneurship. But I'm definitely encouraged to see this uh, this entrepreneurial drive out there. I think there's a lot of people giving bad advice. Um, but, you know, if you can't if you can't decipher and pick out, you know, what is good advice, then you probably shouldn't be an entrepreneur in the first place. I think the biggest challenge and opportunity is just attracting and retaining good people. And I think that that all starts with, you know, obviously you got to, you got to compensate them. Well, you got to take care of them. But I think for me, it's been the little thing. It's uh, letting, make, making sure that, that they know that you care about them um, and that, you know, their lives are important to you. And um, that's something that takes work. It takes intention and you want to do it very genuinely because you can tell when somebody's coming off, you know, fake. Um, so I think that's a huge, a huge challenge and an opportunity. And I'm looking forward to kind of continuing to tackle that. I haven't cracked the secret yet, uh, but if I do, I'll let you know. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, it ultimately comes down to your people and your team, really, uh, no matter what business you're in, uh, eventually you're going to be in the people business. So that, totally that's right. where it is. So tell me a little bit about uh, what's the best way to get in touch with you. If people want to learn more about, about you or any of the companies. Yeah, I mean, LinkedIn's great. You know, I thought LinkedIn's become, you know, it's it's interesting. It's like almost like its own social media engine, but you know, you can you can follow me on LinkedIn. Um, I think I'm on Twitter, Weathington Brian, and then I'm on Instagram. 
Um, I don't really push my own personal brand that much, but if you wanted to reach out, you can always do it that way. You know, you can follow Blue Wave Products. We've got a Facebook, a LinkedIn, a Twitter, an Instagram. Um, Bridge Brothers, same concept. Topper, same concept. Three Leads On Demand, same concept. Maybe check YouTube for that one. We're going to be pushing some YouTube con content this year. What's actually kind of exciting about the Tree Leads one is we're going to be pushing more. We're going to push more of not just the marketing services, but actually trying to help these guys grow their businesses, these guys and gals. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing that kind of roll out because that's kind of similar to your journey out there, you know, with a kind of a noble cause trying to push and, 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 and leave, you know, give people an, an elevated stance to tell their story about business. You know, I want to see, I want to use what I've learned over the last 10, 15 years, and I want to apply that and, and, and kind of pay it back a little bit. Still got a lot to learn, my own, but I, I, want, to, I want to give back a little bit more. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Well, so my last question for you today is what most inspires you as you move forward with your business? I think it's honestly, it's the opportunity to just work with people. And I think it's an opportunity not just to provide a paycheck, but to try to make a difference in their life. And, and, and I genuinely mean that. And that has been slowly ticking. That's kind of my reason why. Of course, there's other reasons. There's selfish reasons. There's not selfish reasons, whatever. But overall, my my the thing that's been ticking, that's kind of kept me going for, you know, 12, 15 hour days for the last 10, 12 years. I think it's quietly been that people. And I, I just kind of realized that within the last 24 months and and uh, right, you know, it, that's that's a big, heavy thing. But right now I'm, I'm really focused on uh, I'm really focused on on trying to effectuate that and make a difference in people's lives. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Sounds like your heart's really in the right place. Brian, too. So, Brian, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, we'll be in touch soon. All right. Thanks, Nate. Good talking with you.